with fewer people wanting to pay for movie theater experiences, instead opting for watching films at home, TVs have been a hot commodity. Whether you have a really old TV or you want to up your game since you're watching more blockbusters straight from your living room. Speaking of blockbusters, Okay, I'm really never gonna get over that, but, but back, back to it. Pretty much all modern TVs come with their own operating system and a bevy of streaming apps. So to help make sense of it all, here are four things you need to consider before deciding which smart TV and streaming platform combination is gonna be right for you. Let's get into it. Hey, if any of the videos on this channel have helped you, if this video helps you, please consider hitting us with a thumbs up, clicking that subscribe, and hitting that notification bell so you'll be notified when we upload the latest content and when we run our contests. Number one, let me answer the question about the platform and TV combination. This one's deep, it's pretty technical, so I'll make it easy. Which TV and streaming platform combination is the best? Not one single built-in TV and streaming platform combo. Why? In my opinion, the best combination is whatever your choice of modern TV is mated to a standalone streaming box. Generally speaking, a standalone dongle or box, a box especially, will have higher end components, more powerful spec, that's its chipset, graphics processing unit, and networking components. It's most apparent though at the lower end when you're paying only three to $600 for 40 to 65 inches. Part of the reason for this, and more specifically speaking to larger streaming boxes like Apple TV, Roku Ultra, or Stream Bar, and Nvidia Shield Pro, is that you have more space for components and for heat dissipation, though Google's Chromecast is certainly no slouch. Now, which streaming box or dongle you choose is really up to your preference and which ecosystem you've already bought into your home. Amazon, Google, Apple, they're all good and, and we have reviews of each here on the channel if you wanna take a deep dive into those separately. Second consideration. Having said what I said about standalone boxes, I think it's more important to focus on TV viewing and audio technology than the streaming apps or operating system that comes with the TV. Look at the features you want that are within your budget. If you have little to spend versus having a bit more flexibility, that's really going to make a difference in what you should be looking at. If you're going to purchase a TV that you know you're going to keep for several years, I always say buy as much TV as you can afford. And there are a lot of options these days. Since many people are connecting sound bars and beefing up surround systems for at-home viewing, I think the sound component is a crucial part if you're going to spend a few dollars, though you can fulfill this requirement in the $500 range with TVs like Vizio's V-Series, where you can get a 50-inch TV which has HDMI 2.1 and eARC, which is what you'll need to ensure you have Dolby Atmos pass-through to your audio components like a soundbar. Let me break that down for you a bit. Let, let's break that science down, demystify it. Depending on how old your TV is, you may have HDMI 1.0 or 2.0 ports on it. HDMI 2.0 is fine for many things today, but HDMI 2.1 is the most recent version of HDMI technology, which by the way stands for High Definition Multimedia Interface. 2.1 offers almost three times the bandwidth or pipe size that 2.0 does, so you can view 4K video at higher refresh rates and with dynamic HDR instead of standard HDR. In addition, you have enough speed from the latest standard to support eARC or the expanded audio return channel so that you can pass those bandwidth intensive Dolby Atmos and DTSX signals from your standalone streaming box through your TV to your soundbar or speakers which support Dolby Atmos. Of course, if you have a soundbar and HDMI 2.0, the workaround is to connect your streaming box directly to your soundbar, then your soundbar out to your TV's HDMI 2.0 input. That is, of course, as long as your soundbar actually supports Dolby Atmos. And it supports 
output to a TV. Third consideration is a look at what kind of backlight a TV has. The main categories for LED backlighting are edge lit, which is exactly what it sounds like. Lights are placed around the edges of an LCD panel to illuminate it. LCD panels require a light source to illuminate the pixels, unlike the last option we'll talk about, which is OLED. Then there's direct backlit, which is where LEDs are placed directly behind the LCD panel to light it. You're going to get a better picture with this than edge lit. Next up is full array with local dimming zones. This breaks the LEDs up into zones of light that can be turned on and off, giving you sharper images with better, deeper blacks. And it gets even better when we get into another technology, mini LEDs. Just like full array, those are broken into zones, but being smaller, you can get thousands of these mini LEDs on larger TVs and ultimately more zones and smaller zones. The best tech is OLED, but you're going to pay around $1,200 starting for the privilege. OLEDs need no light source as they themselves are lit and give you the best blacks and color range, as well as the best way to clean out your wallet. The best combination of performance to price is going to be mini LED backlit TVs. And you'll see sets like TCL six series, which can be had for around $700, or you can step down to full array local dimming minus the mini LEDs in TCL's five series. The 55 inch can be found on Amazon for $428. And I've personally tested that one with the Google uh, version of it. And it's, it's, it's a really good TV. You also have Vizio, Hisense, and Samsung units you can look at in those price ranges as well. The fourth consideration is sound. Sorry manufacturers, but TV sound is less than desirable. That's why we've seen a proliferation of sound bars in the last decade. Some folks don't want an entire surround sound setup and sound bars offer a way to get much better sound from your media than your stock speakers in your TV. And the prices on them are pretty good. Shop them around the holidays and you can often get a really good deal. In this area, buying even an inexpensive soundbar is generally going to provide better sound than what is coming stock out of your TV. And we have quite a few soundbar reviews up here on the channel as well to check out. You can go see Craig and his reviews for those. So those are my four things that you should be looking at. Those are my four things you should consider before buying your next TV. Uh, and as long with some of those considerations being components to buy along with the TV. I'm Tashaka Armstrong. If you have any questions that I didn't answer in this video, please leave those in the comments below. I'll get to them. I love chatting with you all. I will see you on the next video.